I'm making this video in response to a comment that I got from someone yesterday who's been struggling with the teachings of Jesus, and especially Mark chapter 10, verses 28 through 30. She's struggling with knowing whether God has called her to leave her husband and children in obedience to Christ. And so I wanted to talk about today. First, I want to read that verse. Peter said to him, we've left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied. No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me in the gospel will, receive, will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. It's Mark chapter 10, verses 28 through 30. First, I want to say that Jesus never tells us to leave our family. He doesn't say that in that verse. He does say that if we do, if we do lose any of these things for his sake, that we will receive much more in return. That, but we're not to walk away from our, our families in some kind of self-righteous act of trying to please God for no reason. In fact, I believe the Bible says that if we do, we lose Christ. And there's no forgiveness for us. But I'll come back to that. It's true that we're to love Christ more than anything. And those who follow Christ will suffer loss in this life. For some, they may have to leave their friends and their family. For others, they may lose a job or a promotion. We may have to part with people that we love very much, but we are not to seek after suffering. We're to seek Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example from history, a real example. John Bunyan, you ever heard of him? He lived in London in the 17th century. He was called to preach the gospel. On November 12th of 1660, as Bunyan was praying, he was interrupted by local magistrates and arrested. Bunyan was told to stop preaching or go to jail. He replied that he firmly believed in his calling to preach the gospel, and he would not stop. Well, he was arrested, and upon his arrest, his second wife, Elizabeth, went into early labor, and her child died. But that was only the beginning of the suffering that was to come for him and his family. When he was finally given a trial, he kept to his convictions about preaching the Word. And they said, listen, all you have to do to be reunited with your family is agree to stop preaching. But he could not. He was willing to sacrifice his family, his freedom, and even his life for Jesus. Bunyan refused to give up his calling to preach the truth of the gospel to the world, as we are all called to do. Even so, the pain that he experienced was tremendous. He wrote the following while in prison, and really shows you what he was going through. It says, The parting with my wife and poor children has often been to me in this place as the pulling of my flesh from my bones. Also, because I should have brought to my mind the many hardships, miseries, and wants that my poor family was like to meet with should I be taken from them, especially my poor blind child Mary, who lays nearer to my heart than all I had besides. Oh, the thoughts of the hardships I thought my blind one might go under would break my heart to pieces. In the story of John Bunyan, we also have an example of what Jesus meant when he said that we'll receive a hundred times as much in this present age. You see, for Bunyan, it was also during his suffering that he experienced the greatest joy and that his soul was awakened to a fellowship with Christ that he had never known before. He wrote this. He said, I've never had in all my life so great an inlet into the Word of God as now. Those scriptures that I saw nothing in before are now made to shine upon me. Sometimes I have been in the Savior, savor of them, and I've been able to laugh at destruction and to fear neither the horse nor his rider. I've had sweet insights of the forgiveness of my sins in this place and of my being with Jesus in another world. He found true joy in that tremendous suffering. So know that if you are called to suffer, to leave your family, that God will give grace. He'll give grace in this life when we obey Christ. But as I said before, we are not called to walk away from family simply out of some 
stupid act of self-righteous or pretend obedience for the sake of doing that in and of itself. The Bible says that anyone who does not provide for their own family is worse than an unbeliever. Obedience comes out of our love for God. It's not the other way around. The truth is, when we try to please God by our own works, we lose Christ, and there's no longer any grace left for us because we're trusting in works and not in the grace of God that's found in Jesus Christ. In um, Galatians 5.4, Paul writes that you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ, and you have fallen away from grace. He is saying that the moment we start to try and please God by our obedience to the law in the moment, then we lose Christ. It's in that moment that there's no longer any grace left to cover our sins. Now, I know that Paul was talking about the Old Testament law, the old rules, but the theological concept still applies. I want to read you that verse in context of, of the chapter. Um, Galatians 5.4 It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You are trying to be justified by law, have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. But by faith we eagerly await through the Spirit, the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You see, when we obey Christ out of love for Him and not because we're trying to work up some sort of brownie points or something, when we obey Christ because we love Him, when we preach the gospel because we love Him, that is when the heavens open for us. And we will suffer when we do that. We will experience loss. If we have an un unbelieving family, it may cost us those relationships, but only because we were pursuing Christ. Don't do it out of some sense of obligation that, that isn't based on love that is from faith. Express your love or your faith through love and God will take care of the rest. Amen.